today we will talk about separation of variables for the wave equation. The problem that we will solve today is a problem from physics. The problem in physics is as follows. Suppose that on the x-axis we have a string with the ends attached at point x equals 0 and x equal L and assume that the amplitude of this string at the end points can be whatever. So we can think that the string is attached like this and the ends can slide over two rods to which the string is attached. So it turns out that the amplitude of such a string is a function u of x of t that satisfies one-dimensional wave equation in the region x from 0 to L and for times greater than zero and because of our setting that the end points of our string can have whatever amplitude we will have the following boundary conditions first of all the end points of the string cannot move in the x direction so the derivative with respect to x of the amplitude at point zero for any time and derivative with respect to x at point L at any time must be zero. This simply tells that the endpoints cannot move in the x direction. So that's the first condition. And the second condition is an initial value condition at t equals zero. So this for every t greater than zero and then for t equals 0 and x between 0 and L, we want that the amplitude satisfies initial condition with a given function f of x and that the time derivative of the amplitude at time equals 0 is equal to a given function g of x. So we have our wave equation, we have our boundary condition, and we have our two initial conditions. So on, on x T plane, the story looks as follows. We have the boundaries at x equal 0 and x equal L, and here the x derivative of the amplitude is equal 0, as well here the x derivative of the amplitude is equal to zero and then we have initial interval where u of x at zero is equal given function f of x and the time derivative at x equals zero is a given function g of x and we are looking for a solution u of x at t of t in the region between the green and red borders. Okay. The boundary conditions given here and initial conditions imply compatibility, namely if we take x derivative of this and that then at 0 and at L it should be zero, so we have to have that f prime 
at 0 is equal f prime at L is equal 0. Likewise, g prime of 0 is equal g prime at L is equal 0. So, this is the full system of conditions that we want that our solution for the amplitude of this string satisfy. Okay? So, we will solve this problem by separation of variables. Namely, we will look for a solution of the function u of x of t in the form of a product of a function of x only and on the function of t only. Then, if we just postulate a solution like this, and if we insert this into our wave equation, we'll obtain x dot dot minus c squared t x double prime is equal to zero. Where, as before in the heat equation, t dot means dt over dt and x prime means dx over dx. So if we postulate a solution to the wave equation in terms of a product of functions of variable x and t respectively, then we get this condition for x and t. And again, like in the case of heat equation, we are not interested in solutions for which x of x is equal to 0 or t of t is equal to 0. So we are interested in solutions where this doesn't happen. So the equation that we have here can be written as t dot divided by c squared t equals to x prime x double prime divided by x and because this is only function of x and this is only function of t so this must be a constant and we call this constant lambda thus our postulate that the solution is in the term in in the form of a product means that each of these functions should satisfy an ODE, the function x should satisfy ODE x double prime plus lambda x is equal to zero, and the function t must satisfy ODE t double dot plus lambda c squared t is equal to zero. Okay? So we have, as a consequence of our postulate here, we get these two ODEs, and the first one should be satisfied for x between 0 and L, and the second should be satisfied for t greater than 0. Okay? So this is a consequence of our assumption on separation of variables of the solution and now we have to impose boundary conditions on the postulated solution so we will have that x prime at 0 times t at time t as well as x prime at L for whatever value of t greater than 0 must be equal to 0, which is just this boundary conditions. So again, because we are interested in solutions satisfying these conditions, then this implies that x prime at 0 must be equal x prime at L and must be equal to 0. So that's 
the consequence of our boundary conditions on our functions x and t. Okay, so we now start to solve the ODEs that are that are consequences of the wave equation. So the first of this equation is equation that we already analyzed in the case of heat equation. So the first equation is x double prime plus lambda x is equal to zero, with which should be solved in x between zero and L with boundary conditions x prime of zero equals x prime of L is equal to zero. Okay? So one can convince himself that we can restrict to lambda real. We don't need to assume that lambda are complex, so we restrict to lambda being real. So we assume that our constant lambda is a real number. And now we have to distinguish the case lambda equals zero and lambda non equals zero. So if lambda is equal to zero, then the equation is x double prime is equal to zero. So therefore, therefore x is equal alpha x plus beta. And now because of boundary conditions, x prime is just equal alpha and the boundary condition says that alpha must be equal to zero. So therefore x must be equal to a constant. So, so the solution to this equation forms a one-dimensional space spanned by x equal to one. Okay. So if lambda is equal to zero, we can take a solution x to be equal to one. Okay, so that's this case. And now when lambda is not equal to zero, then we know that the equation like this has a solution in the form exponents and now x prime equals zero is zero if and only if a minus b is equal to zero therefore if b is equal to a and now x prime at L must be equal to zero, and this is equal by inserting B equal A into here as I square root of lambda A, and what will remain here will be sine of square root of lambda L. And this must be zero, since A cannot be zero because of this condition, so this is zero if and only if sine of square root of lambda times L is equal to zero. So now two cases can occur. Case number one, when lambda is negative. When lambda is negative, then square root of lambda is plus minus I from square root of the modulus of lambda. And now sine of square root of lambda L is sine of plus minus I square root of lambda L and is the same as plus minus I hyperbolic sine of square root of modulus of lambda L and this is zero if and only if either L is equal to zero, which we have to exclude, or square root of modulus lambda is equal to zero, which is a contradiction because lambda is negative. So we 
are left with the case where lambda is positive. And when lambda is positive, then this equation has a solution with square root of lambda times L is equal n pi, where n runs from 1, 2, 3, and so on. So, in other words, this is satisfied if square root of lambda is equal n times pi divided by L, or if lambda is equal n squared pi squared divided by L squared. So we again see that there is a discrete number of these constant lambdas that can appear in this equation. So we will give an index n to this constant lambda, and this n runs from 1 to 3, and so on. And now, if we insert everything what we know to our solution that is given here, with this satisfied, then we will, say we, will, we will see that for every n, there is this lambda n, and there is a corresponding solution xn of x to be some coefficient bn, and here is cosine of n pi divided by L times x, where n goes from 1 to 3, or we have another solution which we call x0 of x, which corresponds to lambda equals 0, and this solution is given by a constant, let's say, b0, okay? So that would be f here. Now, having this, when lambda is parameterized by this natural coefficient n, we can now pass to the second of our ODEs to be solved, which is this ODE. And here we now will get a solution corresponding to lambda equals 0. Then we get a solution to be t to be some constant plus delta 0 times time. And when lambda is lambda n and pi squared by L squared, then we see that the solution is of the form Tn equal gamma n cosine n pi divided by L times Ct plus delta n sine of n pi by L times C t. So this is the solution t0 or tn, and corresponding to these solutions for t0 and tz, tn, there are solutions x0 and xn. So taking all of these things together, we get a solution for u0 of x of t to be x0 of x times t0 of t, which is just with some different constants, we can write it as a0 plus b0 times t divided by 2. We put these two for, con for later convenience. And now un of xt to be tn of t times xn of t, we can write it as uh, an cosine n pi by l c t plus bn sine n pi divided by l c t times cosine 
n pi divided by l x and here n runs from 1 to 3 and so on so this is what we get from the analysis of the wave equation and boundary conditions for the solution which we want to have in the form of a product of function x of x and t of t we just observed that we have infinitely many solutions of these forms they are parameterized by constants a 0 b0 and a n b n where n runs from 1 to up to infinity so we have infinitely many such solutions and now observing that the problem that we are solving is linear in u u stays linearly in the wave equation and in our boundary condition then we see that any linear combination of these guys is a solution to the wave equation in the boundary value problem so therefore we now can write the most general solution in the form of superposition of all of these guys and we will get a0 plus b0 t divided by 2 plus sum from n equal 1 and now we will not only take finite boundary n but we will extend the upper boundary to infinity making this sum into a series of the solutions of un which are a n cosine n pi ct plus b n sine n pi l c t times cosine n pi divided by l x and that's the most general solution of the wave equation plus boundary conditions we can get by assuming separation of variables and then taking linear combinations of such solutions okay so now we have still to impose our initial condition so we call it our initial conditions were that u of x at time equals zero was a given function f of x and time derivative of the solution at t equals zero must be equal to a given function g of x so in other words if we now have a solution in this form for this to satisfy initial condition then if you put t equals zero in this equation we should obtain function f of x so in other words we we have we don't know what are the coefficients a0 b0 a n b n here for satisfying this initial value condition but they can be determined from the thing that u of x at 0 which is equal to f of x must be equal to a0 divided by 2 plus sum from n equal 1 to infinity and now t is equal 0 so this term will go and here will be a n and what will remain is cosine n pi divided by lx likewise u of t, t of x 0 must be equal g of x and now we have to take time derivative of this term by term in this series and put it at t equals 0 obtaining b0 divided by t to 2 plus sum from n equal 1 to infinity now the bn 
will appear here with the coefficients like this because there is time derivative here with the coefficient with like that so there will be p n here n pi divided by l c times cosine n pi divided by l x so somehow we don't know what are the coefficients a0 b0 a n b n here but we hope to get them from the initial conditions which are given in here now we determine a0 b0 and a n b n actually you see that the procedure of calculating b coefficients should be the same as procedure of calculating a coefficients because they are essentially given by the same kind of formula stating that a given function f of x or g of x is an infinite series of cosines whose arguments are natural multiples of x times a constant. So if I show you how to calculate a0 and a n, you will know how to calculate b0 and b n. So let's first start with a0. So if we take integral from 0 to L of the function f of x dx, there will be integral from 0 to L or a0 divided by 2 dx plus sum of n equal 1 to infinity a n integral from 0 to L of cosine n pi L x dx. So this is definitely equal to a0 by 2 times L. And here this term doesn't contribute at all. So from here we simply get that coefficient a0 is equal 2 divided by L integral from 0 to L of f of x dx. Okay, so it's very easy to calculate the coefficient a0. Likewise, the coefficient b0 will be given by a very similar formula, which is just 2 from 0 to L g of x dx. So we are done with a0 and b0 in here. We know how to calculate it in terms of initial data. Now, to calculate coefficients a n and b n for n, 1, 2, 3, and so on, we <coughs> again invoked the fact that integral from 0 to L of cosine n pi divided by L x cosine m pi divided by L x dx is either 0 where m is different than n or it is equal L divided by 2 where m is equal n and it is not equal to 0. Okay, so let us call this integral i and m and now we, if we take and now if we take integral from 0 to l of f of x with cosine m pi l x dx then we just insert in here, then we will have integral of this term with cosine m pi divided by l x dx, which we know that this is zero in the boundaries between zero and l. l. So then it will be sum from n equal one to infinity coefficient a n, and then there will be integral like cosine m pi divided by l x times cosine m, so there will be precisely our integral i and m.
And we know that this is always zero, except the case where m is equal to n. So this will pick up precisely the n equal m here and will give us a m times l divided by 2. So from here we get that a m's are again 2 divided by l integral from 0 to l of f of x cosine m pi l x dx. So we are done with coefficients a m. Now, likewise, we get that b m. So looking at this, so now this coefficient, which is just b m, m pi l times c must be equal to divided by l integral from 0 to l g of x cosine m pi l x dx or this gives that eventually bm coefficients are equal to 2 divided by m pi times c integral from 0 to l g of x cosine m pi l x dx okay so we have a m's here for every m 1 2 3 and so on b m's here for every m 1 2 3 and so on and a0 is here and b0 is here So, summarizing, the solution to our problem is given, at least formally, by a function u of x of t equal, where the coefficients a0 are equal to divided by L integral from 0 to L f of x dx b0 is given by 2 l integral from 0 to l gx dx and then am is equal to divided by l integral from 0 to l from f of x cosine m pi l x dx and bm equal to divided by m pi c integral from 0 to l g of x cosine m pi l x dx is from m equal 1 2 3 and so on so that's the at least formal solution for the wave equation x greater than 0 and l t greater than 0 and the boundary conditions and initial conditions so here is the problem these functions are given and here is its solution and these functions fx, f of x and g of x, which are our initial value functions, they are used to determine the coefficients a0, b0, am, and bbm. Let us make an example. We consider the wave equation and we consider boundary conditions between 0 and 1. Not before and we our initial condition conditions will be like and 
here t at x0 b so in this example c is equal to 2 l is equal to 1 and our function f of x is given here and our function g of x is given here so we know that the solution for this problem is given by this formula but now because we have explicit forms of functions f of x and g of x we can calculate these coefficients a0 b0 and am bm explicitly but actually remember that these coefficients are calculated from this requirement that the function f of x is equal a0 divided by 2 plus sum from n equal 1 to infinity of a n cosine n pi by l x and g of x equals b0 divided by 2 plus sum from n equal 1 to infinity of bn n pi divided by l c times cosine n pi l x right in our case because we have c equal to and l equal one we want that f of x is equal to a zero divided by two plus sum from n equal one to infinity l is equal to one so there will be a n cosine n pi x and gx to be b0 divided by 2 plus sum from n equal 1 to infinity c is equal to 2 so it will be bn 2 and pi l is equal 1 cosine n pi x right so we want to get f of x and g of x like this and then using this formulae we can calculate the coefficients a 0 b 0 a m and b m but actually because this function f of x is very simple which is just given by this we want to decompose to, to, to write this in terms of a sum of cosines of n pi x so there is a well-known formula relating relating cosine squared pi x to the cosines of multiplicity of an angle and this trigonometric formula is like this that is one plus cosine two pi x so from here we see that is one half plus one half cosine 2 pi x and now we see that this is already of this form so from here we can read off that a0 is equal to 1 and all others a, a's are 0 except a2 because there is 2 here which is equal to 1 half so it is like this and all other AMs are zero, right? For M not equal to two. So now the same trick can work with GX. GX is sine square pi x cosine pi x and a bit of of gymnastics with the trigonometric identities we can get it as 1 minus cosine square pi x cosine pi x and then it is like cosine pi x 
minus cosine cubed pi x. The first term is good, so we'll leave it cosine pi x. And now we again use this kind of formula minus one half uh, one plus cosine two pi x times cosine pi x. So now this minus this gives me one half cosine pi x and the rest will be minus one half cosine two pi x cosine pi x and now the again identity telling what is the product of two cosines of two different angles will help us to decompose it onto cosine pi x and cosine 3 pi x and now it can be shown that this is and again this thing is already in the form of sum of cosines of a multiple pi x and from here we see that because there is no constant term then b0 is equal to 0 and the only terms that appear as a cosines with some multiple of pi x is cosine with one multiple of pi x and cosine with three multiples of pi x so the other terms there will be term b1 and b3, all other will be 0, and now we read b1 times 2n, which is 1 pi, must be equal 1 fourth, because it is this coefficient, and eventually b3 times 2 times 3 pi, so 6 pi, is equal to minus 1 fourth. Taking all of this together, we get that now B1 is equal 1 over 8 pi and B3 is equal minus 124 pi. All the others, B are 0, so B m are 0 for m not equal 1 and 3 okay so now if we insert this what we get here and here to our general solution that we obtained before we get u of x and t is equal a0 which is 1 which is 1 half b0 is 0 so now the term related to a2 so it's 1 half now we are looking at this term c is equal to 2 so there will be 2 from here n is equal to, so it will be another 2, so it will be cosine, cosine 4, 4 pi t. So now we have this term with cosine n, remember, is equal equal to, so it is 2 pi x. So these are both terms related to non-zero a. Now there will be terms related to b. There are two of them, there is one corresponding to B1, so there will be 1 over A pi. Now there will be sine, sine, remember C is equal to 2, and N is equal to 1. So now it is sine 2 pi T, and now cosine pi 
x and eventually there will be term related to d3 which is minus 1 24th pi and now there is sine now c is equal to 2 but n is equal 3 so there will be 6 pi t and now cosine n is equal 3 3 pi x so my claim is that this is the solution to this equation satisfying this boundary condition and these initial conditions. Now you can say, okay, but we are solving the wave equation. So the solution, any solution, should be of the form f of x plus c, which is 2t, plus g of x minus ct, which is minus 2t. So given, so we, I just claim that my solution to this problem is given by this, this formula. But you can ask, can you show me what is the backward wave here and what is the forward way. And I say yes, let's do it. We simply put a new variable u to be x plus 2t and v to be x minus 2t and we solve it for x and t to be u plus v divided by 2 and t u minus v divided by 4 and we insert x and t into this formula so then you will get that u x of t will be and now introducing all of these identities about uh, product of cosines or product of sine and cosine one can show that this is equal to the trick identities you will get that it is equal to plus and one sees that the first term here only depends on x plus 2t whereas the second term depends only on x minus 2t. So this is our backward wave and this is our forward wave and the solution has the form like this as the general theory says.